So in this video, what we're going to do is take a look at how we can apply this cool and simple effect to our outlines and text in Adobe After Effects. Great, so I've just created a very simple composition in Adobe After Effects. If you want to see what that is, I'll just press Command K here are the settings. So as you can see, it's just five seconds long and I've just left it as 4K 25 FPS. Now in order to create this effect, what we have to do is start off by creating a text object. So I'm just going to quickly go to the type tool at the top here, select that, create a text object. Doesn't really matter what it says as long as it makes sense to you. I'm just going to quickly recenter the anchor point by pressing command and double clicking on the pan behind tool. Then what I'm going to do is quickly center it by going to align, center horizontally and center vertically. And then I'm going to press S on my keyboard just to quickly scale it up because I'm too lazy to do it on the character panel itself. And just about so we can see it, I'm just going to leave it like that. And I'll just quickly collapse that scale properties again. So what we need to create the text essentially is create an outline. So what I'm going to do is go to character panel on the right here and then quickly switch between the fill and the stroke of our text object so that we now have a stroke around our characters. If you want to change the color of your stroke, all you have to do is go to the option here. So the stroke color, double click on that. And as you can see, a color picker now comes up so we can quickly select a new color. So you can select a blue or whatever you want. So I might just leave it like this or Fitting with the color of the background, I'll just keep it slightly more pinky purple, something like that, and then press OK. So the effect that we're going to basically apply to this object is the trim paths effect. So in order to find that normally, what you'd have to do is open up the options here, go to animate and then apply trim paths. But as you can see, because it's a text object, this option isn't available. So in order to make this option available, what we basically have to do is create a path which the trim paths option can then use. So in order to do that, what we have to do is just quickly get rid of this window, then right click on the layer itself and go to create and then go to shapes from text. Now, unfortunately, what this does mean is it's now a destructive process. So we've actually lost the ability to go ahead and change the text. So if, for example, you misspelled something or you did want to make changes in the future, you'd actually have to repeat everything after this last step. But what we can do now, if I just quickly go back to the selection tool, is if we quickly open this option, we don't actually need this anymore. So I'll just quickly hide it at the bottom here so we don't have to see that. Is I'm quickly going to expand the options for the text outlines, which is basically that new shape that we created. Expand the contents. And as you can see here, we have all of the paths for our different letters. So this is one handy thing that we do get is that each letter is separate so we can actually animate each of them individually. As you can see, the paths to them are these dots here on the screen. So for example, you can also make changes if you want to customize your text and make it more unique. I'm going to quickly undo that because I don't actually like that. So in order to create the effect, what we now have to do is go to add and then add the trim paths option. So as you can see, this is now an option here. Then all we have to do is expand this option. And as you can see, we have three different values, the start, end and offset. And what these options allow us to do is basically control how much of the effect is taking place. So basically the way the trim paths option works is we have a start and an end point. And basically both of these are the same at their origin. So at the moment, if I quickly find out where the start point is just by quickly dragging up that number, as you can see, the start point is right here, which also means that the end point of the trim paths will also be right here. Obviously, it's different per character, so this is only for the T. When it comes to the E, it will be down here instead. The offset basically allows us to control where this point is starting. So, for example, if I quickly drag up this number, it's actually going to start from a different place along our path. Now, one of the things you will notice already is it's actually taking place on all characters. There is a way we can actually do this individually per character, and I'll show you that in a minute. But just for now, let's return the offset to zero. This small times option, by the way, is if you actually complete a full circle of that orientation. But I'll quickly set that to zero once again. So I'm going to just quickly return the start point to zero. And then what I'm going to do is also set the end point to zero. And then what I'm going to do is create a keyframe at zero seconds. And then drag the current time indicator all the way along to five seconds. And then here I'm going to set the end point to 100%. And then all we have to do is press play on our keyboard to preview the animation. And as you can see, it's basically already drawing out our text. 
So this is already some part of the animation. It looks a bit dull at the moment, but we've already got our text animated. Great, so this is the simple animation. And what we can do is basically also affect the timing of that animation. So if I just quickly select both keyframes and then press F9 on my keyboard, as you can see, this applies easy ease to the keyframes. So already it will be slightly different. It starts a bit slower, speeds up and then ends slightly slower too. We can affect the timing of the animation by going to the graph editor, which is just at the top here. Just by selecting that, as you can see, this is the graph. So as you can see, it starts off very slowly and then it speeds up when it starts to move a bit quicker, the animation. And then it slows down as it reaches the final keyframe. So if, for example, we wanted our animation to be very quick at the start and then actually slow down the further along it got, all we have to do is select the last keyframe and hold and drag this line out all the way to the end. And as you can see, this creates a curve. So as you can see, it starts off slow, but it speeds up really quickly and then slows down all the way to the final point. So if we just quickly play that animation. If you wanted the opposite, all we have to do is go back to the start. I'm going to quickly press Command and Z to undo that. Select the first keyframe and drag that point out until we get that curve on the right hand side. So as you can see, it's going to start off really slowly and then go really quickly and then slow back down. Like that. Another option is to actually drag both points into the center. So it goes really quickly in the middle and actually quite slow on both ends. So that can also be quite a cool effect if you're trying to create a slow and dramatic fade in. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to quickly undo that. I'm going to choose the first option. So I'm just going to quickly extend the last keyframe. So it goes really quickly to start off with and then slows back down. So like I said, you can actually do this for each character individually. And that's why it's very helpful that After Effects actually splits our characters up into different shapes. So what we have to do is essentially just create a trim paths animator for each of our characters. So what I'm going to do is just quickly duplicate this by pressing Command and D three times. I'm then going to take the first option, drag that into the T, the second option into the E and so forth. And then what we can do is basically customize this per character. What we do is just quickly press U on our keyboard to bring up all of the options for our trim paths. So each of these corresponds to the first character. So this is T, E, X, T, for example. So what I'm going to do is just quickly drag out the keyframes for the latter three characters so that they start slightly later. And then if I press play, as you can see, it starts off with the character T first and then continues to the other three characters one by one. So that essentially was how you can apply a cool trim pass animation to text in Adobe After Effects. If you're interested in learning how you can actually apply motion blur to all of your animations in Adobe After Effects, then do check out the video in the top right hand corner of the end screen. And otherwise, do remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content and do remember to subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss a new After Effects tutorial.